Hey guys, what's up, my saints? Who got you back to for some Motorsport 7 with a challenge? Now, this blue guy cheer on here is undoubtedly very, very fast. Not quite as fast as the Veyron, annoyingly, but it is still very fast. <laughs> and I'm gonna do another speed run because I've recently had a lot of thoughts on how on what to do for challenges in this game. And this is one that I think would be pretty interesting, because I've done the all sorts of experience. Low power, as much power as the McLaren, um, low budget, um, stuff like that. However, what if you do a speedrun off-road? Now in Horizon 3, you can technically do that, but there's no off-road area flat enough to really do that. I mean, saying, well, there's no off-road areas at all in Horizon in Forza 7, that's where you're wrong, you see? There's Virginia International Raceway. And they at the start finish line for the full circuit, there is a off-road like playground to the left. I could do the long run um, near the jump. I'm not gonna use that so solely because one it has parts of tarmac on it kind of ruining the whole off-road bit. And second, there's a jump, which I don't want to crack. I don't want to jump and crash into, as fun as it is. So we're going to be using, well, the off-road park on the start-finish straight instead of the long back straight. And it's going to, and I try to look at the fastest off-road cars, and I can't really find any data on it. I mean, I found a trophy truck, which can do 140 miles an hour off-road. So, I'm gonna use that as my benchmark. It might be a little low, based on the modifications you can do in this game. But we shall, uh, we shall give it a try. Now, the slowest vehicle of the day at 132 miles an hour was the Razor Off-Road Buggy, ironically. Yeah. This vehicle has a 700 horsepower, 2 liter i6, 4 wheel drive, and I left it on a stock tire so it gives me some grip. However, the bolts let it down. You see, the next, the vehicles you'll see on this list are on race suspension, but this one I was experimenting with leaving it on the stock suspension because it would deal with the bolts better. Unfortunately, the suspension articulation what caused it to bounce up in the air. And that meant you can't get your power down. So you... And since it has such tiny tires... It does have four-wheel drive, but it has very tiny tires, and lightweight means, you can see, it just gets bounced around like mad. And that... You can see, look at the air time on it. It just doesn't work, unfortunately. Which is a shame, and I got very close to the wall, but... Yeah, 132 miles an hour from the Razor... I thought it would do a lot better. I thought it would do a lot better. And, um, one thing to note about this vehicle. You see, I have to complete the, re the remainder of the lap in order to count this as a... In order to see the replay. So I was driving down here, first off running wide, and the suspension articulation... That caused it to be so slow, going on only 131 miles an hour. Also meant <clears throat> that when you are going very fast to a chicane, it wheelies. And it wheelies a lot. <laughs> yeah, that was 140 miles an hour. These, this is not on dry tires, this is on stock off-road tires. And it did a humongous wheelie. It was absolutely terrifying. Now, the next slowest vehicle is the Cadillac Seat ACSV Forza Edition, sorry. Um, yeah, I picked this vehicle because, one, it has a, uh, it's crazy looking. Two, it, I raise, I, um, it has mass, has, has three, four, fives on it. Those are humongous tires. <clears throat> now... This vehicle achieved a speed of 132 miles an hour using a 970 horsepower stock engine from the car. Which is pretty impressive. It has 35 PSI of boost. I was like, holy crap. 
And the problem is traction. It doesn't. It's still rear wheel drive. It's not four wheel drive like the Escalade. So it's still rear wheel drive, and it just doesn't have the grip. Despite all those aero parts of the crazy of use of the Y body kit, the wing, the sweater, it doesn't have the grip off road. Now I do have all these vehicles on street tires because race tires are just giving you no grip. But the street tires have some tread, which I was hoping would give them more grip. And you see here, I'm just trying. You see on the right, I'm using the telemetry. I'm only going 75% throttle. And I'm getting massive amounts of airtime. I did try to raise the suspension. I was still thinking that raising the suspension would be a good thing. After this, I pretty much stopped raising the suspension because I just realized it wasn't working. <laughs> but 132 miles an hour is the best that the Cadillac ATSV could achieve. Now, next up is the Ferrari 288 GTO. And I know you're thinking, why would you have a Ferrari go on a route on an off-road speed run? The simple reason is that this vehicle does have some rallying pedigree. It was originally designed to be a Group B rally car. So I thought, how bad could it be? And it reached 140 miles an hour, which is pretty impressive for a rear-wheel drive car. And... Yeah, it was it wasn't terrible. I was able to get to full throttle for most of it. It had, it had some decent amount of grip. It only had 700 horsepower, so it did it used its power better than some of the other vehicles. So I didn't have to get one problem with these vehicles is the tires were very cold because you just started off the run. So I had I you see there I, I just did a little handbrake just to get some warmth in the tires because these vehicles had frozen tires and you don't really want that when you don't have much grip anyway so <laughs> but yeah the ferrari 280 did reach 140 miles an hour got a very good run on the exit of the corner yeah like i said the braking zones are terrifying because you I, I will get very close to that wall in other instances but it is absolutely terrifying with some of these cars Now, just two miles an hour further down the road is, well, an AMG Mercedes with uh, safety car mode engaged because um, we have the mythical drag, redu drag reducing um, lights on the top. Yeah, that does reduce drag somehow. It also re reduces weight, so I, I put it on because we're all about reducing drag here. And the super slidey Mercedes SLS is well better than I thought. I, I, I as I loaded this up I realized just how terrible a decision this is. Because Mercedes Benz love to drift. The AMGs love to slide around, go through about fifteen sets of tires in one day, and then go home. So taking them on a dirt course might not have been the best idea. However, it wasn't too bad. And using that, I was able to get 142 miles an hour out of the car, which I would argue is more impressive for the Ferrari, because this had 900 horsepower. The Ferrari had 700, and it was only 2 miles an hour slower. We can see now I'm really hoping I'm trying to get stopped. I'm trying to get stopped. Just about able to turn away. Yeah, it was absolutely terrifying. 142 miles an hour was achieved by the SLS. Now, the biggest vehicle of the day was this Chevrolet Colorado ZR2. It, it had a speed of 148 miles an hour, nearing 150, which is pretty good. Yeah, this vehicle achieved 148 despite having the aerodynamics of a brick. And that is because it is our second most powerful vehicle here. 1,000 horsepower from a 6.2 liter V8. Now this first run I was very cowardly because I was way too close to the wall and I didn't want to crash into the wall. So, um, yeah, I was very cowardly on that, only got 120. However, this next run was much better. I was able to get a very good exit of this corner here because you have to get this spot on. You have to get the turning spot on because if you slide, you lose speed. You don't carry as much momentum because you're partially going to the right. 
So you need to be able to go pretty much perfectly straight, and I did a pretty good job on that one. And if you thought the SLS getting stopped was scary, try stopping 4,000 pounds heading towards a wall at 150 miles an hour on dirt. Now that is really, really scary. Now, this is the first vehicle I built, the Audi RS4 Avant. Yes, we have an estate car on the list, and it was the first vehicle to reach 150 miles an hour. I thought that would be a pretty tough benchmark to beat, because, well, I mean, 150 miles an hour on this short space on dirt is quite difficult. Now, I forget how much power this has, but it is four-wheel drive, it has three tires, and it's pretty freaking fast. Now, I had no idea what I was doing. This was my first run on the vehicle. Each vehicle was allowed one run forwards and one run backwards, so... Yeah, I didn't really know what I was doing with this vehicle, which makes the 150 mile an hour speed run even more impressive. Because... This is new territory. I, I don't know anything about speed running on dirt. <laughs> and neither does pretty much anybody else, since I can't find anything on the internet about it. And you see here I'm running very wide. And, yeah, 150 miles an hour, I probably could go faster now that I have more experience, but that would be a little bit cheaty. And you can see I'm really, really pushing it, really pushing it in the braking zone, but I do get it stopped before the wall. So, yeah, the RS4, pretty good at speed running off-road, pretty good at speed running off-road. Now... In third place on the podium position is a wide-body Lamborghini Murcielago. And I chose this vehicle because I wanted a Lamborghini, because why not? And I chose it because you have the wide-body. Now the wide-body allows you to get bigger tires. This has three eight fives on it. And three two fives on the front. They're massive tires. So I thought that would be very good at going off-road. And indeed it was. It was the first vehicle to crack 160 miles an hour. In fact, it reached 162 miles an hour on dirt. Which is pretty freaking impressive. And uh, since I was able to go flat out pretty darn quickly. Yeah, the suspension, it did struggle with the bumps, but I was able to overcome that with its sheer raw power. Had 900 horsepower. And it had some downforce, which meant it didn't fly off bumps as much. It just hit them a lot. So yeah, the Lamborghini surprisingly good at off-roading. In a very respectable third place at 162 miles an hour. Now in second place is the Porsche 911 Turbo S. Because, well, why not? It has 917 horsepower. It's got... Four-wheel drive, it's really fast. It's just really fast. And it reached a speed of 163 miles an hour, playing in a very respectable second place. And this is by far the closest to the wall any vehicle has gotten. And it was quite a scary stop, because when I was going for the 163 mile an hour run here, I knew I really had to push it, because it wasn't very it wasn't quite as stable as the um, as the Lambo. So, I was going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going 150, 160, 63. I hit the brakes, I realized I'm not stopping. So, I do what you should never do on the grass. I rip the handbrake, and I floor it in the opposite direction, and I just about managed to recover it before I hit the wall. That was quite terrifying. And I'm amazed I didn't roll the thing. But I did manage to make it stop at 163 miles per hour. However, the victor would go to Subaru. With a speed of 167 miles an hour. It was very fast in the Subaru. And this person up here only managed 163, but that did make it tied with the 911. So I knew it could go faster. <clears throat> so, um, 
one thing I found is that this vehicle has 1,063 horsepower from a maxed out V8. And I didn't remove the arrow on it. And I did, and I did that because I didn't want the... It sucked with arrow already on it. It sucked with it. However, here's 157 mile an hour on it. You have to turn to the right at all times. If you don't, you will go off into the wall there. And getting on the brakes is terrifying at 167 miles an hour because you don't really know if they're going to stop on time at that. You don't know your braking points. There is no braking points. You just got to guess. So, some very well-deserved celebratory donuts from the STI Fast and Furious Edition doing 167 miles per hour. So, there we go. If you want a super fast off-road car, you gotta pick a Subaru STI from Fast and Furious, which, I mean, it is at least off-road orientated, unlike the Lambo and the Porsche and the Ferrari and pretty much everything else except for the Razor and the F and the um, ZR2. 167 miles an hour is terrifying on the dirt, but I did manage to make it work. So there you go. That was it, was... it was very interesting building the car for this, because you won't want to have racing tires, which you always want to have unless you're going for a low PI build. So yeah, it was very interesting. Very interesting to build these cars. But that is going to be it for this episode of Forza Motorsports. I'll be back with more 